What's up guys, it's day two, I'm back. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know where you're at, thanks for watching. I'm gonna pull apart the front of the car, I've got a 10 mil, I've got an impact, and I'm just gonna take off everything that I can, that's 10 millimeter. I found a, uh, an 09 or something Lancer, like a base Lancer, at a junkyard about an hour and a half away. And with the Evo 8s and 9s, you can't swap parts like core supports and stuff because they are different. This car, from what I understand, it shares the same core support as the Evo. So I'm gonna pull this stuff off and then I already know it's fucked. And then I'm gonna go to this junkyard and I'm gonna try to cut the front end off. I'm also considering cutting out the spare tire well so I can put a stock fuel tank back in the car and a stock filler neck. There you go. Hey. Quality. To my fans right now my life is looking perfect And I'm happy every day But there's still stuff below the surface that I never show But only cause there ain't a need But let me tell you what I'm thinking Ain't no money, clothes, or weed I'm thinking let's get rich so my family is good Cause if you seen how we were living You would think we in the hood Little logic on my mind Adrenaline pumping daily You either high all the time Or paranoia drove me crazy I'm sick of the Okay, without cutting I'm gonna walk you through this whole front So you can see exactly how I see it that was pretty quick, uh, 17 minutes of footage right now, it's gonna be time lapse, so obviously you won't have to sit through all that. But, it wasn't, none of it was very tight because it was all just done so they could give it back to the insurance company. You'll notice the bottom core support is totally ruined, it's done, it's toast. So I disconnected everything that connects to that so that it can be removed without any, uh, any problems. I'm gonna cut it off with a Sawzall first to gain access. Doesn't matter where I cut it as long as I don't mess it up up here. So I'm gonna cut it here in here and get it out of my way. Now there is this one motor mount or trans mount and I've got to pull the bolts out of that. I think they're 17s. So I'm gonna get those real quick. And then when I replace this, see this flat edge? I know it's dark, but this flat edge right here has spot welds all the way around it. And I don't know exactly where they are yet, but you can, if you've never done this before, you can see it. These are what they look like. These little round indentions. So you drill those out. They have spot weld bits. They have quarter inch drill bits. I normally use quarter inch drill bits and then use a step bit and then use a flat head screwdriver and a hammer to tap it free. It's the you know, ghetto way to do it, if you will, but it works. You can see the frame rail is fine. There's no tweaking in the rail, which is really good because to me that would severely devalue the car as something I would want for myself or someone else. And it's a lot harder to sell these things if they have any sort of damage like this. So that's, that's really awesome. This I saw, I thought it was a clutch line, but it's like a remote bleeder, but it's actually, I think it's an oil pressure sensor. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, it might be. Yeah, that's probably what it is. And then on this side, you can see the frame rail is also in great shape. So it creased right there, which is what these are designed to do. They're designed to fail like this so that it doesn't destroy the entire car, but mostly so you don't feel all the impact inside. If this was like a, a tube front that didn't move at all, the driver would feel a lot more force in the impact. One more thing that leads me to believe this thing made some power before is this spring right here. It was just kind of chilling, but generally speaking, if you have an aftermarket dipstick, this one's not drilled out, so I don't really know how they would have used the spring. But a lot of high horsepower cars in general will run these springs on the dipstick to hold them in because there's so much crankcase pressure when they have the, uh, the higher boost levels or the power has been turned up. There's not a really good like catch can or ventilation system on this motor, but it doesn't mean they didn't take it off. So maybe this went somewhere before, maybe this went somewhere, maybe there was a catch can here, maybe there was a catch can over there. Not really sure yet, but this is where we are. So I'm gonna cut this front end off, this core support, and then I'm gonna head over to the junkyard in Greensboro, which is about an hour and a half away and hope that I'm right and that the base Lancer core support is the same. If it is, I'm gonna get as much stuff as I can from the car because it's gonna be the cheapest option. I'm gonna get the HVAC system, I'm gonna get this entire core support lower and upper, and anything else I find, the condenser, I know the, com the AC compressor is different and I still don't know if this motor has a compressor on it. I'm assuming it's down here on this side. If I get lucky, it'll be there. I don't have any hoses though, so hopefully the hoses are the same too. I don't know, we'll see. Hey, hey, 
And it's confusing, but sometimes I feel I'm to blame Feel like you think I got it made, I put myself on this train I know my start wasn't as bad, wish I could heal all that pain Man, I love how easy these cars come apart I'm honestly so used to like custom stuff that Sometimes when you just do basic shit, it's it's so simple. I mean, I mean, I don't really know what I'm doing with this car particularly, but it's just so easy to figure out. I was wrong when I said the AC compressor was in the back. Those of you who knew probably thought that was really stupid. It's the AC compressor is right here on the front, or this is where it goes. So I do need a compressor, and then I need lines too. It'd be sick if I could use a base Lancer compressor so that the fittings were the same on the outlet and inlet of the compressor itself. I know the condenser's the same for Lancers and uh, Evos. But I don't know if the compressor crossover crosses over. I don't think it does. I found a couple online for like 120, but then I need lines too. And I would like to have AC. AC is cool. It's 2019. Come on. Anyway, of course the port's cut off. You can see it's not how it's going to be. I'm going to drill all the spot woods out, but this just gives me access. And I might actually do the uh, the turbo <sighs> inspection uh, stud replacement. You can see that one of the studs is broken. The other stud is just not there. And then these two uh, closer ones, closer to the head, those were there. So I tighten those down to move the car inside. Still got a crazy exhaust leak. It could be because the wastegate flapper is wide open, causing the dump tube to be wide open. I might have to replace this turbo. I don't even know yet. But we'll get there when we get there. First things first, get it all apart and inspect it all. I'm gonna go ahead and throw all this stuff in my very high dollar top of the line FRS and head to Greensboro. So I get an hour and a half drive and then hopefully the Lancer there has some stuff that can help me. That car was put in the lot in March, which means it could be gone all together by now. Normally they update it on the website. This is LKQ, so it's I think it's nationwide. But sometimes they don't. So we're gonna head to Greensboro and keep our fingers crossed. But don't think I didn't work for this. We came from the same struggle. Robin early reminiscing is healing us taking back to oh, I finally made it to LKQ. Let's hope they still got this car here. I found it. Super lucky it's still here. It's missing a couple things. It's actually got a condenser I'm gonna grab. I could grab that radiator, but I already ordered a new one. The fan trial's in good shape. I'm probably gonna snag that. I might just snag the whole combo if it's not too expensive. And then this, I'm gonna pull off. Probably not gonna keep it, but I will cut the core support out from underneath it. The top bar's already gone. Might be able to find it somewhere. Could be floating around on the ground somewhere. I don't know what heater core that is. It's probably something else, I hope. And it still has a pretty solid interior, so I'm gonna take this upper piece since mine got damaged when the windshield broke and see what else I can get out of the inside. And it is missing some stuff, so. All in all, pretty good. We got some handles, we got a dome light, snag all that. And I don't think anything else is really usable. The filler neck's different, it's two wheel drive. There's no rear axles, of course, so I don't think the filler, oh, it's gone anyway, but I don't think it would work. I thought about cutting out this spare tire well right there where that seam is and welding it into mine. I don't know if I want to do that yet. But first things first, we'll get that core support and then we will get the uh, AC components out. Quick little update, dash is out. Now I got access to the blower motor and uh, HVAC and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna pull all of it. I actually don't know what the car has. So I took, I went ahead and took all the vents, see them over there in the wheelbarrow off of the dash, the underside. And I'm gonna get these two. I know that my car's got this same issue where these yellow plugs just aren't used. By the time you guys watch this, I'll probably know what these are for, but feel free to let me know anyway. Also, this stuff looks like rear air, but I don't know where it routes to. I mean, I know it goes underneath, but I don't know like what feeds it. I guess the ducting was just gone already from whoever else tore this car apart, but I got all the handles off the roof. I've got to get the dome light in this setup. And then my, my batteries died on my Ryobi. I have a charger in the car. I'll come back and I'll finish the final cut on the core support. And it looks like it's going to be a pretty good day. All right, that was a long junkyard test. We are loaded up in the trashy FRS with no bumper and uh, it's full, it's full of everything. Condenser, core support, blower motor, like 200 bucks for all this stuff. I hope that was a good deal. Now I'm gonna take it back if I find it cheaper. You can take it back to any LKQ, I hope. So, fingers crossed. Let's get this stuff back. We got an hour and a half drive home and then uh, probably not gonna work on anything else today. So day one of the repair was a success. I got the whole thing apart. I got a new core support. I got a little extra stuff there. I cut it with the saws off, so I just had to make it happen. I got a condenser, I got some lines. I don't know if the lines will work or if they'll cross over, but I just, I snagged them. They were like 14 bucks a line, so I just, I figured it's cheaper than any other option. Intercooler's toast, but I ordered a new one. It's just a Rev9 kit with like charge pipes and stuff, so I'm sure it's very similarly like 
welded, you know, poorly. The tanks look terrible. I don't know. We'll see. It's just to get it running. Uh, I'm going to try to save the fan shroud. They wanted way too much for it at the yard, and it was a base model, so the plugs looked a little different. I don't know if they would have worked. I mean, obviously, I can rewire it, but uh, I just didn't want to pay. They wanted like $65 for the shroud, and it wasn't in perfect shape. This is the old support. It's obviously never going back on the car. Uh, you can see how it's supposed to look, so I'm pretty happy about that, honestly. And then the top piece, I couldn't find another one, but this one actually is okay. It's not... It looks tweaked on that right side bracket, if you look over there, compared to this one. But it might be salvageable. I know it came off without any resistance. There was nothing like pushing on it force-wise. Then I'm pumped on this. I got the HVAC unit, the whole thing with the heater core inside, blower motor, all that stuff. I got this top piece right here, which I realized I needed last minute because the windshield actually hit this when whatever, whatever broke this, whether it was a person or whatever it was, hopefully I'll find out someday, but it, it did damage that. And thankfully it's not the center of the dash. So I don't have to swap the lid. I can just swap that piece, which is awesome. I got all the handles for the inside cause they're all missing. I got the dome light and I got all the ducting just by chance. I was worried that maybe it wouldn't be in the car. And when I look through here with the light, you can see that the, the ducting is not there. If I was pulling it for the track, it, everything counts weight wise, right? So I would have pulled it too. And then I did get an A-pillar cover just in case I decide to sell the gauges and the car goes all the way back to stock. Don't really need the gauges. Maybe recoup some of the money and we'll put that pillar in place of what's there now. Here's the other vents. You see they got their LKQ signature graffiti on them. And that's it. That'll do it for today. I'm, I'm pretty happy with all the parts I got. I'm way behind on the FRS sanding. You can see the bumper over there. But uh, it's coming together slowly but surely. So. When my, uh, when my gases come in, before the gases come in, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure the turbo is actually worth a shit and see what kind of shaft plate it's got and blah, blah, blah. I'll probably take it off, take the whole manifold off, pull it all out, and then re-gasket the turbo to manifold while it's outside the car, fix the studs that are broken. Then I'll do a new gasket here, I'll put it back in. I got a downpipe gasket as well. I'll get that installed and uh, We'll go from there. We'll see if it actually runs a little bit better once I have all the charge pipes connected and everything is there. Also, it could have really old fuel in it. I don't know when it was wrecked. I need to find the old owner. If I could find him or her, that would be fantastic. In the meantime, I'm probably gonna prep the core support, drill out the spot welds on this setup as it's in my way, and then I'll weld the new lower section in. It'll give the car a bit more rigidity if I've gotta move it, push it, or whatever, and uh, I can get this bolted back up, and that'll just make me feel a little bit better. So yeah. Progress is progress, moving forward. I wanted to do a little bit more work on the interior, but I'm pretty exhausted, so I think I'm gonna call it a day here. If you see something you like or you want me to change or you got any comments or questions, please leave it below. Peace out.